I've seen, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the Baddy here, and you're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK. Hi everybody, welcome back to Combat Sports UK YouTube channel, and a welcome back to James the Bastard Lewis, second time around. How are we, sir? Yeah, very well, mate, and you? Yeah, well, very good, mate, very good. So you've just, um, have you just come off the mat? I know you're going back to do some coaching tonight, but how is it for you at the moment? Yeah, two uh, two good sessions in today, so just got a little little break now before I go back and do some teaching. So, well, uh, a nice chat to you, mate. Yeah, always always on the grind, always on the grind. And speaking of coaching, you um, were part of uh, Paul Smith's team for um, Stage to the Cage. How was that experience? Talk us through what he was like and how it all kind of came about, and then obviously the the fight on the night. Yeah, it was a uh, it was great to to be part of that that journey with him. We we met in uh, in Bruno when I made me when I made me debut. Um, I remember having a breakfast and I thought, sure, that's Paul Smith. What's he doing here? Um, we got chatting. I think he he was a big fan of Tom when when Tom used to fight. So Tom invited him down to the to the gym to train, and uh, we have a lot of people who say they're going to come and train, and uh, mm -hmm. we never see him again. And then he was there on the Monday, so. Uh, and he's become a, a big, big part of the team. So, what what he did over that that ten twelve months was ph phenomenal. Um, it's a bit of a shame uh, Jake did such a good job, really, because you know Paul Paul had some skills to, to showcase, which it's a shame he didn't. But um, he he got in there fully prepared, and I was I was very very proud of him for that. And from a from a coaching perspective, what, what did you kind of take from, from that experience? I guess kind of taking someone who at the time was a complete novice and saying, okay, you're going to fight in, I think it was what, just over a year or something that, that he started out. Um, how did you kind of break that process down and what did you look to kind of instill into his game, so to speak? Yeah, well, I mean, in terms of coaching, you know, I'd have to give all the credit to, to Tom there. I, you know, I think you'd call me more of a teammate, really. Um mm -hmm. Rather than a coach, Tom took that role. Um, but you know, I think we could all see where Paul's strengths lay. You know, his his grappling really, really came on. His his top game was very, very good. So, which is similar to my style. So I just tried to give him tips and tips and tricks where I could really, and just be the best the best training partner that I could for him really, and, and just just give him you know little tidbits about about fighting itself, but. I know, obviously, performing and fighting are different, but you know that those feelings, that fight or flight, is very similar. So he he, he was already really good like that, Paul. Anyway, so but no, in, in terms of coaching, developing him, uh, you know that was all Tom. Well, great credit, great credit to a to a great team, and obviously, like you said, he really did develop, and you could see it. You could really see it in the in the videos, and you could see the camaraderie that uh, that you guys had and. What did you think about the Manchester show as a whole? Was it good to see kind of the promotion that you fight for step into your uh, home market? You know, you were obviously uh, slated to be on the card to begin with, but that kind of fell off. You know, what did you think about the whole Octagon Manchester experience in general? Yeah, I mean, um, in terms of the show itself, it was typical Octagon show. It was great production. Um, I thought the fights were actually really, really good. I think we put together yeah. a great card. Um, all we need now is is the British fans to to get behind it because they've got a great show there on the mm -hmm. doorstep. You know, you see people sort of saying and complaining when is UFC coming back, but you've got Octagon there, which is probably entertainment wise is better. So mm -hmm. it's here for you. Go go and watch it. Um, you know, you, you've got a great product there. So I think we just need uh, everyone to get on board with it now because it. Octagon put Octagon do their bit. You know they put on a great event, um, and I think the people that did go absolutely loved it. Um, so yeah, I think we just need to get the, the UK fans to get on board now. But it was yeah, a great absolutely. First step. I, can, I can I can echo that as well. Like you said, a great a great first step of just getting those fans on board. It's on obviously Channel Four production. The production's out this world, and then. For you, does it add something for your bucket list? Obviously, I know you would have loved to have been on that Manchester car, but is it is that now on your bucket list to say, right, I'm going to fight for Octagon in the UK. We've got Newcastle and Birmingham next year, but is that something you're looking towards, or are you just enjoying these away days where you can where you can jet off somewhere and fight fight in Eastern Europe or something like that? Yeah, I mean to be honest, I, I'm I'm loving 
I'm loving going away. I, I was looking forward to Manchester because, you know, it, it's, been, it's been a while now since Fort Home and it would have been nice for friends and family and uh, you know, I think uh, all the kids and coach are looking forward to coming and that. But, yeah, I like the away days, but it, it swings and roundabouts, isn't it? It's, you, mm-hmm. it's easier to fight at home, you know, food-wise, nutrition-wise, weight cut-wise. Um, but I, I do love going abroad and going into people's backyard and having a scrap. So, but yeah, but Birmingham's a good good date. What what's that? Is that about April time? Is it? Yeah. So the first one is in January in Newcastle, and then the next one's coming around in or end of March, April time, I think, just before Easter, if I remember right. Yeah, but Birmingham be a good date. So that that'd be good. Uh, you can keep January. I've, uh, <laughs> I've been constant training camps and just to sign for Octagon with different fights falling out and yeah. stuff like that so I'll be having a couple of weeks off after this one Yeah so just before we jump onto your fight who was the uh, the standout performer do you think from a British perspective on that on that Manchester card um, I've always liked Jack Cartwright you know he, he, he knocks people out doesn't he I know he subbed this guy but even that was sort of in dramatic fashion wasn't it I think uh, Big Scott asked him I know I know Scott um, wasn't made up with that performance, but he fought a big guy, and I think you've got there's a lot more to come from Scott if Oxcon can keep him. So I think even though he wasn't too pleased with the performance, he, they've got a great, great fight in Scott Askin there to put some performances on. Um, but I think I think Jack Cartwright was a really good signing. Um, I love that fight with uh, Jonas. Yeah, uh, and. I want Aaron Abey to get that. We all want Aaron Abey to get that rematch, don't we? Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. I don't think there's anyone who doesn't want him to get that belt. So he was looking really good in that fight. So yeah, but yeah, I, I like I like, I've always liked watching Jack Cartwright fight because you know he, he's he's going to knock someone out, isn't he? So yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy's a savage. The guy's an absolute savage. I think I was backstage talking to George Staines, and then I kind of came back out as they were face to face in the octagon. I just heard them. Just heard them going at each other. That's going to be an absolute banger of a fight for the uh, for the Newcastle car. But attention turns to yourself. December 9th, you're finally getting back in there. October 50 versus Marek Vartel. How are we feeling in the lead up to the fight? I mean, we're just under, we're just over 10 days away now. Um, how are we feeling? Yeah, great, mate. Happy to uh, sort of be coming to the end of another training camp. and looking forward to that little rest by week and uh ready to go, going out there and having a scrap. Just the uh, same process, same training, weight cut, just another fight. Can't wait. And it is, it's, it's one of those, he's um, dropped a lot of fights by decision. So, you know, the, the kind of obvious money, I suppose, would put would point towards a win maybe for yourself by, by decision. Is that something you've looked at and said, yeah, if I can take him into the deeper waters, like, you, like we mentioned earlier with Paul, with that grappling background that you have, do you feel like that's a good key to victory for you, or have you seen something else in his style? Yeah, I mean, the way I fight, I'm I'm always gonna sort of end up grappling. I think even if I don't initiate that that wrestle, I think it, I always end up whether it's by catching a kick or that they take me down or whatever. I, I'm always gonna sort of end up grappling. I think, but I'm a, I'm certainly not. Looking to rush that, I think the striking's more than more than good enough to to compete with with Bartel on the feet. But in terms of his record, you know, it, I think he, you know he's only ever really lost to good guys, and as mm-hmm. you say, by decision. Um, you know, I didn't really look at that record. I think oh, is a win for me. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I rate I rate Marek. I think he's a good fighter. Uh, he's certainly not a diddy. Um but yeah, just I'm I'm just looking to take it where the fight goes, really. But I think if we do end up grappling, you know, I think I'll uh, I think he'll really struggle with me. I think I'll end up scragging him about, really. Yeah, it kind of looks like it from looking at his background. It's more boxing, Muay Thai. You know, he's added a bit of grappling in there, but it's not, so to speak, the straight the main strength of his game. And like you said, you feel comfortable wherever wherever the fight goes. And has this camp been? looking towards him or fixing some things kind of from, from your previous fight that you had during the summer? Obviously, like you said, you're back-to-back, what, three or four camps now. So how how has it kind of changed and evolved this year? Yeah, a little bit of both, really. There was a little bit we had to fix some, 
from uh, the last fight. Um, you know, going backwards a bit too much. I think they even commented it in the commentary. Our, our strikes were pretty much even. Mm-hmm. You know, but it looks like I was losing the fights. I'm going backwards all the time. So, little bits of fiction there. Obviously, little bits that we've seen that Bartel does. But, you know, it, it's never 100% focused on the opponent. It's always making ourselves better. The focus has always got to be on, on you, hasn't it? You know, mm-hmm. it's you versus you, really. So, uh, but yeah, a little bit of both. But really, no, we just train every day and then fight comes around and we fight pretty much. Yeah, that's the way it goes. A very, a very warrior, warrior like mindset. I guess with all the coaching and everything, you're constantly evolving those tools, right? If you're drilling them yourself or you're helping other people to drill them, they say one of the best ways to learn is to teach, is to teach something. So what what do you think's been the biggest gain that you've made in this specific camp leading up to this this um this battle fight? Um, that's, that's a good question I think uh, you know I think we've we worked on holding the centre a lot more mm-hmm. um, but really just drilling down on my strengths as well because I think I think my strengths are his weaknesses so really just doubling down on, on what I'm good at really mm-hmm. you know i.e. Like, pressure and things like that so again just looking on improving me really rather than looking at our opponents too much because as we all know opponents can change anyway yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Not to go on. Not to go on. Seem very capable of bringing them in, kind of last, um, yeah. last minute. But you're, you're somebody always shows like up. That. Is always there. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, no, they're getting a last minute guy in though. Really good. <laughs> so I mean, they must have a list somewhere. And when when you look at the, when you look at this fight, does it give you an added? Um, what's the word, anticipation of getting back in there considering how the fight went in the summer or does it kind of feel a bit like, yeah, you just want to get in there and fight or are you just extra amped up to kind of get it back, so to speak, from the summer? Yeah, very much. So I think, I think whenever you, you, you drop a loss, I think there's always that, that added little bit of like, right, let's get back on track here. Let's put that to bed. Let's sort of wash that bad taste out of your mouth, so to speak. Um mm-hmm. You know, I think I think when you win, you're not in as much of a rush to like, right, come on, let's fight again. You know, when you lose, you really want to, as I say, wash that bad taste out of your mouth and, and get back on track. Yeah, and then you also have the motivation. You've got Christmas straight after, so you can almost kind of enjoy Christmas a little bit if you pick up the win. <laughs> Best time of the year to fight. Best time. <laughs> Yeah, I can see why January wasn't wasn't really something you were looking for after that part. Yeah. You never know. Well, a lot last, well, last, well, last year I had the the early February fight scheduled with uh, Spelty. So mm-hmm. I didn't really have a Christmas there and I ended up breaking my rib. So uh didn't need the fight. So, yeah, I would definitely be having Christmas off this year. Yeah, you got a bit. You got a bit to uh, to make to make up with now. So we're all set. Where when do you travel out to um, to Ostrava? Is it early next week to kind of get a few days to acclimatise, so to speak, or are you kind of rammed with coaching straight up until you go? Uh, no, yeah, I'll, I'll be quite down on the teaching next week. So we fly out Wednesday, I think, and uh, I think Tom's going to follow us on to Thursday. Nice, nice, very so, good. And just before like- we head off, I would uh, go on, James. No, no, I was just saying, you know, I like to get there on the Wednesday at least because Thursday, you know, you're cutting away. It's, it's tough to travel that day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As I was saying, I'll be, um, you know, I don't want to get us out of here without talking a little bit about Liverpool. Um, I remember we talked in August and you were pretty pessimistic about how the season would look. Obviously, we're just coming <laughs> off that that draw against Manchester City yeah. at the Etihad as well. So you must be feeling a bit better about it now. Very much so. Very much I'm surprised to be honest. But I think uh you know, Jurgen's pretty famous for for being capable of that rebuild, isn't he? I think he did it in Dortmund, didn't he? Um and he's shown it he can do it again. So yeah, I'm, I'm we're actually doing a lot better than I thought we'd do to be fair. So yeah, buzzing. Yeah, and I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty happy. I think I said to you, I can't remember if it was on on the interview or afterwards that you give you give my team Chelsea a good smash in, and that ended up one one. So I was pretty pretty happy about that. So, <laughs> so not too bad. But I mean, uh, Chelsea, I think they're coming again as well. I think uh, it's only a matter of time, isn't it? It's only a matter of time. 
who knows all, all, my, all my kids in school give me give me crap for it every single every single monday morning as soon as i see them they just they just hammer me every time especially this for this weekend there's a couple of newcastle fans in a couple of the classes i teach and they were just they're brutal man. they were honestly brutal <laughs> that, that's what i'm always when you get a team like newcastle and spurs that have been nowhere for ages yeah and then they start coming up just stay, um, stay with that. but everton <laughs> might go down so that's a bonus Hey, that's a bit. That's a big bonus for you. That a big, big bonus. So, um, last one for me. If there was, um, let's imagine, kind of a big battle royale of all the Liverpool players, MMA style. Who do you think? Who do you put your hat on to be the last, the last man standing coming out? Oh, currently, currently playing. Current squad, yeah. Well, that's a great question. <laughs> that's a great. I think. Uh... I think Virgil's got to be just by pure size, hasn't he? He's got to be up there, hasn't he? I reckon Lewis, Lewis Diaz is a bit handy too, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I reckon Lewis of Columbia. Diaz. But, but there's, there's not really... I couldn't name a player in the team that you'd say is just particularly hard. There's no real hard one in football now, is there? So, um, this it's is not true. like back in the 90s, is it? Where you could say pick a Vinnie Jones or someone. So, I think it'd be a pretty poor fight, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually, actually quite fancy as a bit of a dark horse. Um, Simicas, the left back, he looks just like a bit of a psychopath. He's got that kind of look yeah. in his eye that just kind of says, I can do a bit, you know. And uh, I think the young lad in midfield, I think his dad was a bit of an hard case, the Serbian kid. Oh, um, not Slobber's he's, he's Hungarian, right? Yeah. No, oh, he's a young kid. He, he's ah, Spanish, but he's. Bekcic. Bekcic. Bekcic, yeah. His dad was a bit hard, I think. So maybe he's got a bit, a bit about him. Oh, you never know. You never know. So there, there you go. There's the pick, Virg, Virgil van Dijk. I'd be probably leaning towards um, Alisson. You know, he's already got hands. We can see he can punch. So yeah. I'd lean towards Alisson. Two of his brilliant as well. You never know. <laughs> yes, you never know. Exactly. Exactly. So um, I'll throw it over to you, mate. Any kind of last words, any shout outs you want to make uh, before we wrap up? Uh, no, just um, hope everyone enjoys the fight on the night. I on the ninth, I think it's. Uh, I wanted to fight with Barcelona because I thought our our styles would gel. So I think it's going to be a good fight for the fans. So tune in and watch. That yeah, should be an entertaining one. So that is um, James the Bastard Lewis fighting just under what about eleven days now. Octagon fifty, so a big show for Octagon. It's a, it's a big show um, against Marek Barthel. If you can tune in, you can find it on uh, Channel Four. They usually pop it up on the website just as it goes live. I think you're two or three fights in, so nice and early for the for the UK fans, which will be great. So as you're getting to your uh, your Saturday dinner, whatever you've got going on, you can tune into a bit of violence with uh, James the Bastard Lewis. So thanks very much for your time, sir. All the best with the coaching and obviously the fight the fight coming up next week. Thank you very much, pal. Great to speak to you. Yeah, great to speak to you. Thanks, mate.